Welcome to the Trade Spotting Fibonacci tutorial. If you've been watching the Trading View Tips and Tricks series, welcome back. Today we're going to be covering the Fib tools. We call them Fibs, but they do not lie. Specifically, we're working on the Fib retracement tool, the Fib extension tool, the Fib time zones, and the Fib circles. So what more could you possibly ask for? Please remember to like and comment and subscribe. And by the end of this video, you'll be as good as any trader in the world at using these fib tools. You find this pattern all over nature, but we don't care. This isn't David Attenborough. This is trade spotting. Welcome back to the charts. Today we're going to be looking at the FIB based tools, specifically FIB retracement, trend based FIB extension, the FIB time zone, and our FIB circles. If we star them here, they show up here, which is our favourite drawing panel, apparently, which allows us to also turn off these drawing panels, which gives us a much bigger space to work in. Before you do any FIB analysis, it's very wise to initially draw in your horizontal levels of support and resistance, which on TradingView is super simple with a keyboard shortcut Alt-H, which will drop your line right on top of your crosshairs just did there. Now that was quick and easy. You'll see I have changed the settings on my horizontal lines so that they are dotted lines rather than straight lines and orange with a slightly reduced opacity. That means I can see them, but they don't stand out too much, cluttering my view. Now, the Fib Retracement Tool. There's three important things to bear in mind before you draw one of these. First off, it always goes left to right. Secondly, in a downtrend, you go from the top to the bottom. And in an uptrend, you go from the bottom to the top. We'll start in our 2018 downtrend, which would mean we start at the top. And the third thing to remember is, well, you hear people say only go body to body or only go wick to wick. I feel that with FIB-based analysis, it's important to be accurate. If it was a geometric pattern we were studying and the price wicked up but reverted to our pattern, then perhaps we could dismiss that wick. But this isn't a geometric pattern. And it's important to focus on reality. So I say choose reality, choose wicks, choose life. All that being said, and bearing it in mind, let's draw our fib retracement. We start at the top in a downtrend, we get the wick, and we go left to right. Here's our ultimate low. And now the first thing you'll notice is that the gaps between our high and our low have been filled with these lines. If you get up the default option, it'll also have on a very garish background. It reduce the opacity up, as you can see here. On the dark mode on TradingView, it makes the fib colors look very 80s. So I like to get rid of the background. It also can get confusing when you're doing a study of confluence and you've got an awful lot of fib levels on the go. So this will do for us for now. Within this fib retracement, our levels are defined. The 0 0.786, 0 0.618, 0 0.5 and 0 0.382, 0 0.236. Now, all of these levels are important when trading various assets, but with relevance to Bitcoin, the three most important are the 0.382, the 0.5, and the 0.618. Another important area to note is between the 0.618 and the undrawn 0.65 is an area called the golden pocket. This is a very heavily respected point of retracement in Bitcoin. In order for our FIB retracement to be valid, the price must retrace, you see it's in the name, it must retrace at least to the 0.236. When and only when you have a valid FIB retracement, would it be appropriate to draw a trend-based FIB extension? Because again, it's in the name, it's an extension of your retracement. So first, you'll need to complete the retracement. Within this downtrend, there will have been many valid FIB retracements. Let's draw one now. So we'll hide this FIB level for the meantime, and we'll draw more FIB retracements, this time starting at our ultimate high and imagining we had got to this stage, this drop, and our prices had retraced and they had retraced all the way, drag it across so we can get it over the price action, 
but keep it at the right level, we can see that the pressure is raised all the way up to the 0.786. Now, the point of fib analysis is to measure the strength of trend for potential retraces, at which point in a downtrend you would sell the rally, or to look for points of reversal, that's at which point the trend will reverse. Also, of course, if we were in uptrend, you'd be looking for pullbacks to buy. So at this point, we would have seen the price had retraced through the 0.382, through the 0.5, and even through our 0.618 and our golden pocket. This would lead us to wonder, had that trend indeed reversed? Ultimately, it was shown to have continued, but at this point, it would have been appropriate to draw a trend-based FIB extension. We would have taken it from our high, we would have gone to our next low, and then our next high. We can drag it again to the right while keeping it at the right price so that we can see those fibs over our price action. Now, as we can see, not only did it respect our initial fib completely, it also respected this fib and this fib extension very well, ultimately, and on this level, this level, this level, and again, it could be said to have done well here. So now we have a very good example of fib retracement and a FIB extension in an appropriate time to have used it. But this was all 2018. What about now? Well, let's first draw a FIB retracement. We'll take it the whole length of the move from our top to our bottom using wicks and going from left to right. We can see that the trend was intact for the entirety of our FIB retracement. And then when it ultimately did reverse, it has so far made it to the 0.382. Having, let's drag this across and we'll see, keeping it at the appropriate level, see that it also back tested the 0.236. So this would suggest a very strong upwards move at this point. But as we can see, it has stalled at the 0.382. Had instead we drawn this FIB retracement tool, to this point, at this point in time, and taken it to the right so it was over our price action. We would have seen that possible reversal, which looks very similar to 2018, yet it continued on with our trend. It would have been appropriate at this stage to take a trend based FIB extension, take it from our high to the low, and then to the next high. Take it to the right while keeping it at the appropriate level so it's over price action. So you can see that not only did this trend respect FIB levels the whole way down through the retracement, but it also needed the FIB extension and still called many of the levels accurately. Now we've covered our FIB retracements and our trend based FIB extensions. The more controversial two tools we'll be using today are the FIB time zone and the FIB circles. Now, a lot of people will tell you that FIB time zones are gobbledygook, they don't work, they're made up, and they're crazy. But if that was true, how am I about to draw one right now, which does work? And why would TradingView provide it as a tool on their platform if it was gobbledygook? Those are two very good questions. So, back to our 2018 downtrend. Again, you draw it from the top to the bottom in a downtrend. Here's the top. Here was our next bottom. It's very tight to see what's going on there, but we can zoom in. And although I dropped that on really quickly, and we've zoomed in to look what's going on very quickly, we can still already see immediately that there are areas of interest. Here, the price pivoted on a horizontal line of resistance. We missed it here, but that doesn't mean that this area is meaningless. You can also see that there are areas where the price didn't quite pivot on this line of horizontal resistance. Now, that doesn't mean that this area and this line are meaningless. We can look at it and say that because the price moved before it reached here, it was perhaps more of an aggressive move. Now, that one took us very far without much of a retracement. You can see here it caught the pivot again, more or less the same here. And at various stages, it provides lots of insight. So that was 2018, and it might just be fluke that I drew that and it worked, says you. So let's check out current price action and see if it can tell us anything Oops. 
about what we're up to now. So we go again in a downtrend from our top to our next low. We see very close to catching this pivot, very close to catching this one, very close to catching this one. Again, where it was arrested in its drop. Here we caught what could arguably be said to be the start of this move. And here, very close to the top of this move. Again, we caught a privet here. And that was just drawn in a couple of seconds. And as you can see, it's the second one I've drawn. And again, it's providing lots of insight into potential areas of where the price may pivot. So while you're never going to find a technical analyst worth their salt who will tell you that time analysis works 100% of the time, all of the time, you will find the odd one or two who are very good at using this tool as part of a study in confluence and combining it with their other indicators, say for example their lines of horizontal support and resistance, or an RSI which would indicate the strength of trend. And those analysts can be quite successful in predicting potential prices and times where the market may move. Now on to our most ridiculed of the tools but still providing us with insight the fib circles. Part of the reason that these get such a bad rep is because they look so absurd, especially when you first draw them. So I'll just draw one over here so you can see what I mean. There's obviously no price action, but the set up the settings. Initially, it comes with a background like most fib tools, and it looks like that. Honestly, that could have been designed by Krusty the Clown, but if you just turn that off, really does add degree of serenity to what otherwise appears to be completely childish chaos. So we'll turn off the background and better still we'll remove that fib circle. So back to 2018 and we'll see what would a fib circle have done for us then. Similarly downtrend from top to bottom and left to right. Our next point of interest would be so hard to see at this zoom level but it would be in around here. Let's extend that out and see what it tells us. So I draw that, I drew that relatively quickly at a quite a far zoom level um, but I'm not going to change it now. Let's see what it shows us. So the price came in, it hit our 0.236. These fib levels are the same as our fib levels in our retracement. They're just constructed differently, but the red line here is our red line from our fib retracement, the 236 and so on. So you can see that when it reached it, it had a degree of a reaction here, it bounced off one here, it definitely had a point of interest here. Here you can see the confluence with our FIB time zone and all of our FIB retracement levels. Same thing happened in and around here and then you could say that that was a point of interest and then we broke out of our circle. So while it's easy to be cynical about these things, you can't say that it's entirely without value. You may find, as I've done at various times, that there are other tools which do the same job or an extra one as well and it'll either be less clutter on your chart or complement other indicators you're using. But a lot of people like to know how to do this, even if you're not going to use it. And I would suggest that it's quite a common practice that I do and can be helpful to every so often do a study in Confluence and include some time analysis with your efforts because while it might not give you an 100% accurate prediction, it does do a very good job of focusing the mind on what is coming next. And that's a very important part of trend analysis. If this video were to get a thousand likes and people were interested in knowing, I'll happily show you how I would construct a weekly study of confluence using fib tools. I'll also throw in all my other indicators and tips and tricks about how I come up with the price. Should I start doing live streams soon? You'll all get to see that. You probably won't be able to avoid it. Okay, subscribe, like, comment, and then you'll definitely never be able to avoid me. All the best. And that's your fibs, folks. I'm sure you've had your fill. If you like them, please like this video and comment and subscribe and that bell thing. And I'll see you in the next one. I've been Jamie. This has not been financial advice. This has been Trade Spot.